I'm Tim Marlow, and every month I'll be bringing you my personal selection of the most exciting events and exhibitions from across the international calendar. This month, a British design studio in Tokyo, a once-in-a-lifetime retrospective of a 17th century Dutch master, a new look at the invention of modern art, and a contemporary artist re-examining the naked human form. But first, a significant anniversary for possibly, now nah, definitely, the most influential and important artist of the 20th century. 2023 marks 50 years since the death of Pablo Picasso. Various exhibitions and events will fill the year in his honour, but this month, two in particular have caught my eye. At the Musée National Picasso in Paris, Leading British fashion designer and erstwhile national treasure Sir Paul Smith has been invited to lead the artistic direction of an exhibition exploring the museum's great Picasso collection. Smith is renowned for his often quirky attention to detail and is himself a compulsive collector of everything from art to bicycles. So he's an inspired choice to give a new perspective on the work of the Spanish modern maestro and its ongoing relevance. He's also included works by contemporary international artists, Guillermo Quitka, Obia Kigbo, Micheline Thomas and Cherry Samba. Then, in Vienna, the Albertina Museum is raising a metaphorical glass to Picasso in an exhibition of over 70 works, including major pieces from across this most influential of careers. There have been more exhibitions dedicated to Picasso over the past decade than any other artist, and not all of them have been great, but such is the level of Picasso's inventiveness that his art still feels to me an incredibly fertile territory. And these two certainly get the 2023 Picasso programme off to a strong start. Next, here in London, a show dedicated to the genesis of modern art. The National Gallery is staging an exhibition focusing on the period between 1886 to the First World War, a time of tremendous upheaval and change which saw the foundations laid for the art of the 20th century. After Impressionism, inventing modern art begins with what it describes as the towering achievements of Cézanne, Van Gogh, Gauguin and Rodin, but also showcases equally important work by everyone from Klimt and Kandinsky to Kaffe Kollwitz and Sonia Delaunay. The exhibition focuses not just on Paris as the international artistic capital, but also looks at artistic developments in cities across Europe. I'm bracing myself, but also relishing the opportunity to wade headfirst into post-impressionism, fauvism, cubism, expressionism, and quite a few other isms that I've not thought about for some time. But given the quality and range of art in this exhibition, I'm confident of its landmark status. Meanwhile, in Tokyo, a prestigious London design studio is making its Japanese exhibition debut. For the first time in Japan, an exhibition dedicated to Heatherwick Studio, featuring 28 key projects, is taking place at the Mori Art Museum. Some people find founder Thomas Heatherwick hard to pin down, but I love the range and scale of his vision, and the fact that everything his studio produces, from a park out on the Hudson River in New York, to a seemingly back-breaking but remarkably comfortable chair series called Spun, manages to combine spectacle with a sense of harnessing the energies of the world around us. As this show demonstrates, there's a curiosity as well as a generosity of spirit in Heatherwick Studio's work, and invariably a sense of playfulness too. Their work is also seriously good. Strictly speaking, my next pick opened last month, but it's possibly already the exhibition of the year. The work of Johannes Vermeer is always a big draw, but given the fact that around 35, 36 of his paintings are known to be in existence, the chance to see a definitive 28 of them in the generously proportioned spaces of the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam makes this the unmissable exhibition of 2023 and probably beyond. The bringing together of these incredibly delicate objects is a remarkable achievement, and yes, Girl with a Pearl Earring has made the journey from just down the road in The Hague. Vermeer's vision ranged from celebrated views of his native city of Delft to seemingly quotidian but invariably mysterious interior scenes. But I think it's the miraculous precision that still captivates audiences from around the world. And new technology has enabled a deeper understanding of his process, also explored in this exhibition. Few artists in the history of Western art seem to have scrutinised things so densely and intimately. And I can't think of an exhibition that warrants such a close viewing as this one. And finally, at the Kunsthistorische Museum in Vienna, one of the most dynamic painters of our time is turning that prestigious collection on its head. 
The German neo-expressionist Georg Baselitz has selected about 80 of his own works from the early 1970s through to the present day and 40 from the great picture gallery of the Kunsthistorische Museum, concentrating entirely on the nude human form. Baselitz has a profound understanding of the history of Western art and his visual dialogue with Cranach, Altdorfer, Bolden Green, Correggio, Titian and Rubens, as well as the Mannerists at the court of Emperor Rudolf II, should lay bare some fascinating insights into the timeless process of figurative painting. Famously, Baselitz exhibits his work seemingly upside down, and the constant shift between a stable viewpoint and an inverted one should make the experience of seeing this exhibition, Georg Baslitz's Naked Masters, less like a passive art historical lecture and much more an animated and immersive experience. So there you have it, my selection of must-see shows from around the world this March. I do hope you get to see at least one of them. <laughs>